Scotty Scheffler, the 18th player to win multiple Masters at the podium after his performance. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a privilege to welcome our 2024 Masters champion, Scotty Scheffler. Scotty, congratulations on your great victory. Two years after your breakthrough here at Augusta National, here you are again in a green jacket as a two-time Masters champion. Can you describe your emotions as you hit your final putt today? Um, yeah, I'm glad I brought my, my stroke average, my putting average down on 18. That was nice. Um, down to, you know, five strokes and two and a half is my average. So that's not bad. Um, no, it's, uh, it's hard to put into words how special this is. I, uh, it's been a long week, a grind of a week. The golf course was so challenging and to be sitting here wearing this jacket again and getting to take it home is, uh, is extremely special. Great. Let's open up the questions. John. Scotty, um, two part question. One, I see you've got some kinesiology tape on. I assume that's from your neck. And two, how was this Sunday morning different than the Sunday morning two years ago? Yeah, the Sunday morning was definitely different. Um, yeah, instead of just me and Mary at the house, I had a couple of my buddies with me and we sat and relaxed. Um, Tried not to think about golf, but it was increasingly difficult. Um, but, you know, they, they were great support for me this morning. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was a long morning, but it was, it was well worth it. I'm glad to be, glad to be sitting here now. Don. Scotty, many congratulations. Uh, your rivals will be hoping that at some point you're going to take the, your eye off the ball. By the time of the next major in a month's time, you'll have a baby in your arms. What are the chances that you think you will take your eye off the ball? Well, I'm definitely not going to intentionally take my eye off the ball. Um, I, I will go home, soak in this victory tonight. Um, we'll definitely enjoy the birth of my first child. But with that being said, um, you know, I still, I still love competing. Um, my priorities will change here very soon. You know, my, my either son or daughter will now be the main priority along with my wife. Um, so golf will now be, you know, probably fourth in line. Um, but I, I still love competing. Um, I don't plan on taking my eye off the ball anytime soon, that's for sure. Doug. Buddy, what do you consider the most important shot you hit today? The most important shot? I would say the, the best momentum turner that I had today was the birdie putt on eight. You know, I had two really good shots in there along the green. I had an extremely difficult pitch that I hit up there about you know, 10, 12 feet from the cup. And it was a challenging read because it turned early and it was really straight at the end. Um, so it was a putt that you really had to start online and um, you know, hope it held its line. And you know, I poured that one in and then um, you know, it kind of gave me some good momentum, and I used that to, to birdie nine and ten, and um, you know, keep pushing because I knew I knew there was birdies out there on the back nine. I had a lot of really talented players trying to chase me down, and um, I knew pars weren't, weren't going to get it done. Can you explain the difference of, of how it feels emotionally between four putting the last green and one putting? Um, one putting is significantly easier. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I tried not to let my emotions get the best of me this time. Um, I kept my head down. I didn't even, I don't even think I took my hat off and waved to the crowd when I was walking up 18. I, I, I did my best to stay in the moment. I wanted to finish off the tournament the right way. Um, and I got to soak it in there after one putting instead of four putting, which was, uh, which was a, little bit, a little bit better. Chris. Scotty, Colin was talking about how much farther that, uh, you were than him on a couple of holes and how you know, much of an advantage that is. Do you see it as just a massive mental advantage when you're you know, a couple hundred yards or 50, 100 yards ahead of Colin? I mean, I don't know if I was that far ahead. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> 50 yards, 30 yards. Colin may have exaggerated a little bit, but yeah, I, dr I drove the ball really well this week. I was hitting it hard. Um, today was a day where I was able to, to swing freely and um, – Around this place, I mean, distance is, distance is very important around this golf course. Um, the fairways are fairly wide, and when the greens are this firm, you have to have short clubs going into these greens, especially with the, the little areas there are to where they put the pins. Um, and so I would say I was swinging a bit harder this week than I would at a normal PJ Tour event just because there's a bit more room off the tee. Um, at a regular tour stop or... U.S. Open or something like that, my tee height may be a little bit lower and I might be hitting more different types of shots, but a lot of the drives I hit this week, I was just teeing it high and hitting it hard. Um, that's pretty much it. And Congratulations, Scotty. I know you said you kept your head down all day, basically, but at any point did you allow yourself to enjoy the lead you had? 
enjoy the lead? No. Um, I think just like any human would, your mind starts to wander a little bit out there on the golf course. I mean, we're out there for you know four or five hours at a time. You know, you got to let your mind wander. Um, I tried to soak in stuff around me today. I, I looked up at the trees at times. I looked up at the fans occasionally and tried to soak in, you know, some of their energy, but um, did not ever let myself get attached to the lead. I just tried to keep pushing. I mean, I think if if I would have played a little bit defensively, it would have been a significantly different finish. You know, I went for the green and two on 13, was able to make birdie. I attacked the pin on 14, um, was able to make birdie. Uh, went for it again on 15, was able to make a nice par, and I hit a really good shot there into 16 to make birdie. And so, you know, if I was just trying to play for pars the whole back nine, I would have been standing there on 18, having to make par, um, and hoping Ludwig would only make a par. Um, and so, Around this golf course, you have to stay aggressive. Um, you have to hit the right shots. There's no way, there's no way around it out here. You can't play too defensive and you can't play too aggressive. You just got to hit the right shots. And um, fortunately, today I was able to do that. Sean Martin, um, you say constantly that your identity is not in your golf scores. Um, what is it about winning and competing then that you find satisfying? You know, that's a really good question. I. Uh, I was sitting around with my buddies this morning. I was I was a bit overwhelmed because I told them I was like I wish that I didn't want to win as badly as I did, or as badly as I do. I think it would make the mornings easier. But I I love winning. I hate losing. I really do. And when you're here in the biggest moments, when I'm sitting there with the lead on Sunday, I really really want to win badly. Um, and my buddies told me this morning, you know, my victory was secure on the cross, and that's. Um, that's a pretty special feeling um, to know that I'm secure for forever, and it doesn't matter, you know, whether or not I win this tournament or if I lose this tournament. Um, you know, my identity is secure for forever. James, Scotty, I'm wondering what did you learn about leading at this golf course from your previous major Masters win to this one? I, I think it's a difficult golf course to close out a win on. I mean, there's. Like I said, you can't play overly defensive. Like 12 is a good example of um, a hole where if you play overly defensive, like where the pin is today, you're trying to hit it right over that bunker, um, right there in the middle of the green. And if you pull it for a righty, it goes further. Like you can see Max Home in the group in front of us maybe pulled his a touch and it flies into the bushes long. I mean, I've hit in the bushes long there multiple times. Um, so you can't just sit up there and play overly defensive. You have to play to the correct spot and hit really good golf shots. Um, and I did that to the best of my abilities today and was fortunately able to hit some really key shots and um, make some nice birdies there on the back nine. Um, really... From hole eight on, I just I played really really nice golf. Andy, uh, you're speaking about your faith, there, Scotty. Could you just tell us a bit about how much it features in your head when you're actually out there on the course? Does it help you cope with the sort of vicissitudes of the wind and things like that, and bad breaks? Yeah, I mean, I, I believe that today's plans were already laid out, you know, many years ago, and um, I could do nothing to mess up those plans. You know, I'd, I've been given a, given a, a gift of this talent, and I've, I, I use it for God's glory. Um, that's pretty much it. So when I'm out there, I try to compete to the best of my abilities. Like I said, I really want to win. Um, I feel like that's how I was designed. I've been that way since I was a young kid. Um, that's always been a part of me, and I don't think that should be going away anytime soon. And I, I don't believe there's anything wrong with that either. But at the end of the day, like I said, my identity's secure already. Um, and I get to come out here and compete, have fun, enjoy it. And then at the end of the day, win or lose, my identity's secure. Kyle. How much do you struggle with <clears throat> just the idea of discontentment, of, of needing, whether it's more wins, more money, more fame to be satisfied? And, and when do you find yourself most content? Gosh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I feel like playing professional golf is an endlessly not satisfying career. Um, for, for instance, in my head, all I can think about right now is getting home. I'm not thinking about the tournament. I'm not thinking about the green jacket. I'm trying to answer your questions. I'm trying to get home. Um, <laughs> I, wish, I wish I could soak this in a little bit more. Maybe I will tonight when I get home. But at the end of the day, I think that's what the human heart does. You always want more. And um, I think you got to fight those things and, and focus on what's good. Um, because, like I said, Winning this golf tournament does not change my identity. My identity is secure, and I cannot cannot emphasize that enough. Kevin. Buddy you mentioned you know your life is going to change coming up. What are you looking forward most to about being a dad? 
Well, looking forward to the next couple of weeks, hopefully getting a bit of sleep, and then, you know, a couple of months of probably not getting any sleep. <laughs> no, but, I, I, I mean, I'm excited. I think it's funny. When, when you get married, a lot of people tend to make jokes about, like, oh, your life's over, yada, yada, yada. Um, my friends were always very excited for me to get married, but you get some people off, offhand just making jokes and stuff like that. When it comes to having a kid, Every single person says that it changes your life and it's the most special thing in the world. So I cannot, marriage has been such a tremendous aspect of my life, I cannot even imagine what being a parent is going to be like. Brian. Hey, Scotty, you seem like you're in total control right now of your game, in the zone, whatever it might be. How do you feel out there and do you feel like you're playing your best golf right now? I feel like I'm playing really good golf right now. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm in control of my emotions as I've ever been, um, which is a good place to be. I feel like I'm, I'm maturing as a person on the golf course, which is a good place to be. Um, I think it's hard to argue with the results of the last few weeks. I've been playing some really nice golf, but I really try not to focus too much on the past. I, uh, I'm going to go home and reflect on this week and, and soak it in as best I can. But, um, you know, like I said, it's not... Uh, it's not a very satisfying sport because I'm supposed to tee it up again on Thursday. So um, back to the grind pretty quick. Adam. Scotty, was there anything Meredith said to you this morning that helped you in, on your way to victory today? Uh, she just asked how she could pray for me, and I actually wasn't able to talk to her for very long this morning, which was unusual. Um, but, you know, she sent a lot of prayers. My, my neck was bugging me a little bit, and so, you know, prayed for some healing and um, – you know, just prayed for, for me to have a lot of peace out there. Uh, I had a good conversation with my buddies that were here this morning about about victory and that victory or being secure. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it was it was a longer morning again than anticipated this year, but I, I, I would say it wasn't as long as it was a couple years ago, but, but still a long morning. Is that the only time this week that your neck bothered you, this morning? Yeah, I think it was – I think when you get stressed out, I think your body just – reacts to it whether or not it's a stomach ache or your body starts aching i think my body was just reacting to the stress and um yeah that's pretty much it ryan Gotti, can you take us back through the decision uh, that you and randy made to hire phil kenyon and what that meant to you at the time and, and what it means now after east lake last year ride home on a plane and um sitting there talking to blake and i we kind of look at each other and i think we both were thinking the same thing and we both kind of looked at each other. And I was like, you know, I think I want to see a, a putting coach. And Blake goes, I think that's a good idea. Let's talk to Randy. Um, and I'd watched Phil before. I watched him coach players. And I, I think when you're out here for as long as I have been, you, I just see stuff. And I loved the way that Phil coached his players. Um, you know, you look at a guy like Fitzy who lines up a lot of his putts and uses a, you know, a putter that has a lot of swing to it. And um, then you look at a guy like Keegan Bradley, who Phil also teaches, who doesn't use a line on the ball, uses a big – giant putter with cross hand and he putts good and so as I watched Phil I could tell that he was open minded and um, that's the type of people I like to work with and um, we kind of hit the ground running there in the fall and you know I can't I can't speak highly enough of the decision that Randy also made to just be open minded not take an ego to it just sit there watch us work watch Phil do his thing Phil is also a guy that does not have a big ego he just wants what's best for his players and um you know, I'm really, really fortunate to have those two guys as part of my team. Um, I, I can't – it's hard to – it's hard to describe – what it's like, you know, having somebody, I mean, Randy had taught me for almost 20 years, every single aspect of the game. And so for me to have to bring in somebody else could have been a shot to his ego. And he may not have wanted me to do it, but Randy sat there and he said, you know what, I think it's, I think it's, this is the right time. And so we called Phil and about a week later he came in and, and had a visit. We worked for a couple of days and um, yeah, now we're here. Mike Keegan in the back. Hi, Scotty. Um, I just wondered when you talk about you, your own parents and your upbringing, if there was one thing that from that that you will definitely use when you become a father, and also how long you think you're going to leave it until you put a plastic club in the baby's hand? <laughs> um, I guess starting with my upbringing, you know, my parents always wanted what's best for me. Um, 
I swear my dad, I think, would, would lay in front of traffic if it means that I wouldn't get a scratch on my arm. I mean, he would... He would die for any of his kids. I mean, both my parents would. They're, they're such special people. Um, and so first and foremost, I think how much love they had for us growing up, I mean, that's what I'm looking forward to most, I think, about being a parent is being able to love love my child like, like my parents love me. Um, how long will it take me to put a plastic glove in my, my kid's hands? Um, you know, it's funny. I, I watch my nephew a lot. My, my older sister had her first child, and he turns two in June. And some people want to be like their parents, and some people don't want to be like their parents. And Hayes is a kid that wants to be just like his dad, and his dad loves grass. And I got a video from my sister the other day of Hayes following his dad around in the backyard. with His dad was mowing the lawn, and Hayes was following him with his plastic lawnmower. And Andrew loves to play golf. Hayes loves to play golf. Um, what's my kid going to like? Who the heck knows? Who knows what they'll pick up on, but whatever it is, um, you know, I'm just, I just want to be there to support them. It doesn't matter what they're doing. Jeffrey. A great champion and an even better human. Scotty Scheffler offering a peek into the mind that has created these moments. Scheffler, now nine career PGA Tour victories all coming since February of 2022. He was the pre-tournament favorite, and he showed you why. The first pre-tourney favorite to win since Tiger in 05.